Hello friends, Dr. Marta Perez here. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to discuss a very highly, uh, one of the most popular questions I ever get, and that is what prenatal vitamin should I take? And of course, you know, I'm gonna provide education on the why behind prenatal vitamins. So don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of my important videos, and let's get started. Okay, so honestly, questions about prenatal vitamins absolutely fill my inbox. It's a really popular question. I think part of it is because when you go down the supplement shelf, there are tons of different prenatal vitamins. There, almost every brand has them. There's tons on Amazon. And there's like expensive prenatal vitamins that a lot of companies market directly like through influencers. So you're seeing ads for them when you're scrolling through social media. Okay, so first of all, when you're talking about a prenatal vitamin or any like supplement, these things, any pill you take for nutrients, it's a supplement. And what does the word supplement mean? It's supposed to mean to supplement your diet. So if you ever read about like daily recommended dosages, you'll see the recommended daily allotment, meaning what are you supposed to get? But that's supposed to include both nutrition and supplementation. And the good news is those who have access to high quality nutrition in developed countries often are able to obtain the appropriate amount of vitamins and minerals through nutrition with one important exception and that is folic acid. So folic acid is a derivative of folate which is found in different fruits and vegetables and dietary sources. However, when randomized control trials randomized patients to have folic acid supplementation versus not, they found a decrease in neural tube defects. Neural tube defects include spina bifida and other problems with the brain and nervous system. So folic acid supplementation, no matter what your diet is, the healthiest ever, is recommended for all people of childbearing age actually, and should be started about a month or three months before attempting pregnancy to make sure your body's reserves are there. Also because the neural tube forms and closes oftentimes either very early in pregnancy or even before someone might know they're pregnant. The recommended amount of folic acid per day is 400 micrograms. There are some special conditions that you should actually get a lot more folic acid supplementation up to four milligrams. And those conditions are having a seizure disorder on anti-seizure medicines, having sickle cell disease or having a history of a prior child affected by a neural tube defect. If you have a question or you've heard internet drama about folic acid versus folate supplementation, I'm going to discuss that at the very near the very end. So I mentioned that most adults who have uh, access to a varied healthy diet of fresh foods and vegetables um, in developed countries don't always need supplementation with vitamins in normal life. But in pregnancy, the requirement for certain vitamins and minerals does go up and not everyone, even in the US, can access fresh fruits and vegetables as well as other healthy foods. And so in general, the recommendation from ACOG in the US is that people of childbearing age and people planning to become pregnant or who are pregnant do take a prenatal vitamin. I have heard people from other European countries say that, you know, prenatal vitamins aren't recommended in my country, only taking folic acid is. And, you know, I think that's fine. These are regional recommendations. Large studies about supplementation with prenatal vitamins has shown benefit to increase preg good pregnancy outcomes in middle and low income countries, but there's not been a universal increase in good pregnancy outcomes from prenatal vitamin or multivitamin supplementation in high income countries. So the WHO kind of honestly um, hedges a little bit about the need for everyone to take a prenatal vitamin in a developed country, but ACOG does support it. I do too, I mean, I think it's easy enough to take, but I will say that it's not something to overly stress about. If you're someone who eats a varied and healthy diet, before pregnancy, even in the first trimester, if you're not feeling well, you're feeling very nauseated, it's hard to get any fresh foods in, that's totally fine. Nutrition and getting adequate stores of vitamins and minerals is not a day-to-day -day thing. It's more kind of global. So I tell people, don't stress out about prenatal vitamins. Really any of them are fine because like I said, almost all of them contain folic acid in the amount recommended. 
If you wanna know about some more vitamins and minerals, I'm gonna discuss them in greater detail now. So the first one I'm gonna discuss is vitamin D. Vitamin D is a substance that's obtained through dietary sources and also through exposure to sunlight on the skin. There are populations that are at high risk of vitamin D deficiency. Those people are people with dark skin tones, people who live in, in northern, far northern or far southern hemispheres or have winters where they're inside and not a lot of exposure to sunlight and possibly other like nutritional deficiencies. So vitamin D is a really important vitamin for both the health of the pregnant person and for the fetus, and vitamin D deficiency is actually pretty common. There is no established amount of vitamin D in pregnancy that is deficient versus not deficient. And so there's no indication to test everyone for vitamin D in pregnancy. Most prenatal vitamins do have some vitamin D in them, a few hundred international units per day. And the total recommended income intake of vitamin D is about 600 international units per day for pregnant people. But if you suspect that you either knew you had vitamin D deficiency in the past, or you're one of the high risk groups, it's worth considering if you wanna take extra vitamin D supplementation. It is presumed to be safe in pregnancy to take up to 1,000 to 2,000 international units per day without any harm. Vitamin D has also been batted around as like an answer specifically to some pregnancy complications. And there are some ongoing clinical trials, but so far there's been no additional benefit of extra vitamin D supplementation in terms of just pregnancy outcomes. Outcomes. The next vitamin and mineral is DHA. So DHA is a specific type of omega-3 fatty acid that is really important in the neurologic development of fetuses. DHA is found in seafood. It is definitely recommended to eat about 12 ounces per week of seafood that is high in DHA and low in mercury. That's about three to four servings per week. And you can see this recommendation in both ACOG and the CDC and the FDA. A lot of patients feel hesitant about eating seafood in pregnancy because they think about mercury. What is the dangers of mercury? But I really like this, I'm gonna show this flyer from the FDA. There's really most fish and most common fish are pretty low in mercury. Mercury. The recommended amount of DHA per day in pregnancy is about 200 to 300 milligrams. Now, even though I said that the only thing I really recommend is making sure you get folic acid, I do have a little special plug for DHA too. I do think it's beneficial to have a DHA supplement in your prenatal or maybe take it separately. And that's because I don't know about you guys, but when I'm pregnant, I have a little bit of an aversion to it. It's really hard to eat it. So I do think that adding DHA to a supplement is helpful unless you're someone who like loves seafood and eats it constantly and it you know, that isn't affected by pregnancy. And then I think you're probably fine without the DHA supplement. Another one I wanted to talk about was iron. Iron deficiency is probably the most common nutritional deficiency, and it's the most common cause for anemia among pregnant people. And the other reason I want to talk about iron is because gummy vitamins, prenatal vitamins, often don't contain iron. And that may be fine. Please talk to your doctor. They can always, we check for anemia in both the first and the third trimester. And for some people, we may check more often. If you're someone who can't tolerate a prenatal vitamin except gummies and they don't contain iron, talk to your doctor. They may recommend taking a separate iron supplement. Iron supplements can be very constipating and that can be very problematic because pregnancy is already very constipating. So it's, you can actually get iron supplementation via the IV as well. Choline is like the new hot micronutrient. I swear I see more talk about choline than like any other micronutrient on social media. And I will say, you know what? I think it lives up to the hype. So choline is a micronutrient that it can be involved in cognitive and neural development of a fetus. It's found in a variety of foods um, pretty commonly, including eggs, poultry, seafood. The recommended amount of choline per day is 450 milligrams per day. And there was a study called the NHANES study that surveyed Americans in depth about their dietary habits. And in that study, the pregnant patients, their average reported amount of choline per day was about 319 milligrams per day. So they were short by about 130 milligrams per day. Most prenatal vitamins do contain choline though to fix that gap between diet and recommended amount. So you can think about your diet you can look at your prenatal vitamin and you can decide whether or not you think you're getting enough choline. I'm gonna be honest, for me as an OBGYN doctor, eggs are very popular in my household for breakfast. I really like eggs for breakfast. I tolerated them very well in the first trimester too. I don't take a separate choline supplementation. I think I get enough through the diet, but it is something that I would consider and look into. All right, another big one to think about is iodine. So iodine is very important for thyroid development and most people get adequate amounts of iodine in developed countries. 
However, more recently, there has been concerns about pregnant people maybe not reaching the recommended amount of iodine. And that's actually because we've moved from using table salt that contains iodine on purpose to help with nutritional deficiencies in developed countries into using, you know, more fancy salts like sea salt that actually don't contain iodine. So whereas we don't recommend that pregnant people start eating more salt than they already would, if you have the salt that's in your kitchen that you cook with when you're pregnant, you should think about changing out the sea salt to actually use salt that's made with iodine. The next one I'm gonna talk about is vitamin B12. So vitamin B12 is important for some people actually for supplementation. So vitamin B12 is a really important vitamin for a variety of functions for both you and the fetus. And it is found almost exclusively in animal products, eggs, dairy, and meat itself. So vegetarians may get a limited amount of it if they don't eat a lot of those products. And vegans certainly are at risk for a vitamin B12 deficiency. Fortunately, this this is very common knowledge, I feel like, among the vegan and plant-based community, and supplementation is usually well known. It's something I usually screen my patients for at the first prenatal care visit. So if I have a patient who follows a vegan diet, one, that is safe for pregnancy. There is no recommendation that I get to change the diet, but I do recommend adding a B12 supplement. Okay, so there are, I could go over like every single nutrient, but I just wanted to hit some of the high points of the ones that we think about and why. I will say I don't obsessed over reading the back of vitamins. I don't want you to stress about prenatal vitamins as well. I do think it's empowering to just have extra information about both nutrition and prenatal vitamins, but the most important thing is gonna be making sure there's at least 400 micrograms of folic acid if you're an average risk individual. The other really important point about prenatal vitamins is like, more is not better. So whereas we don't want people to be deficient in these vitamins and minerals, we also know that some of them, if taken in excess, can actually be toxic. So vitamin A is an example of that. So if someone needs more vitamins or minerals or supplementation, there should be an individual supplementation and not taking two or three prenatal vitamins or something per day because they contain all these vitamins and we don't wanna overdo it on any of them. So, all right, I said I would go over the controversy about folic acid and folate. Several of my colleagues um, who are on social media really have deep dived this and I will link some really helpful, long, very scientific articles and resources that they have linked. Okay, in summary, my quick announcement. Um, I don't even like to tell people which prenatal vitamin I take because I really do feel like most brands, they contain 400 micrograms of folic acid per day and they're sufficient. But if you really wanna know, I will show you the one I take. And yes, that is currently take. I am at the end of my 19th week of pregnancy with my second baby. This is my pregnancy <laughs> announcement. And the prenatal vitamin that I take is this one, Nature Made Prenatal Multi and DHA. I'm not sponsored. I just picked this off the shelf, probably during my last pregnancy. I think I took this one the last pregnancy too. It doesn't really make me nauseous. I do take it at night before bed. Sometimes I forget to take it, especially when I'm on nights at work and I try to remember to take it in the morning before I go to sleep. It's okay, nutrition, everything is more than just a day-to-day -day thing. It's kind of a global thing. So anyways, I hope this video was really helpful, even if you skipped through the middle part because it gets kind of dense. But please leave questions about prenatal vitamins in the comments. Again, I'm not gonna get fully into the folic acid folate debate. So if your question's about that, access the resources that I shared. And anyways, you can come see me on Instagram to talk about my pregnancy too. We'll see how many people watch this video and really get it. Don't forget to subscribe. Videos every Friday going over educational content to make this the happiest and healthiest pregnancy for you. And I am right there with you. Second trimester, way better than first. If you want more information about first trimester, I'm gonna link my video from my last pregnancy where I talked more about first trimester symptoms. Um, and I hope this was helpful. I'll see you next week.